It's Jack from BT McFarland. Today we're going to go over some tractor terminology. We're also going to go into some specific Kubota tractor terminology. So let's get into it. Today we're going to go over some terminology that you guys will commonly see in the tractor world, whether that be on YouTube videos or in forums on any kinds of tractors. So the terminology we're going to go over to, to today, some of it will be specific to Kubota, but some of it will be more general industry terminology. You guys, depending where you're from, you might call things differently than what I'm going to say in the video, so leave that below down in the comments. The first thing we're going to look at is the ROPS bar. So that's rollover protective system. So that's that bar you see go over top of the tractor. In, in the event of a rollover, that bar, it is designed to protect the entire weight of the tractor. Just make sure you're wearing your seatbelt at the exact same time. There's also another kind of system that we call FOPS, and that's going to be fall protective systems. This one right here, this canopy, it is not fall protective. You will know fall protective when you see it. It's gonna be a bit of a beefier canopy. That's what you would see on our B26 or L47 or M62. Some of our cab tractors as well, like the bigger M series, their cabs are fall protected rating as well. Now we're gonna to move to the front of the tractor. Up on the loader, there is a ton of terminology that for a first time tractor buyer and newer tractor owners, it can be a bit intimidating to learn what everything is. So we're gonna start back here. This is the loader frame itself at the back. So right here, this is gonna be considered the entire loader frame. You will have your lift arm cylinder down below. Closer to the bucket, you will have what they call a bucket cylinder. So the bucket cylinder, that's gonna have significantly more force than your lift arm. Down below a little bit, there are different quick attach styles. I know depending on the brand that you get, there could be a pr proprietary quick attach system, but generally on Kubotas and a lot of tractor brands right now, you will see this skid steer style quick attach. So if you see SSQA in any forms or people say skid steer quick attach, skid steer style couplers, it's all gonna mean the exact same thing. Essentially, it's just these two levers down here. You just pull these two levers and then you can get into a set of pallet forks, a grapple or anything like that. Attached to your skid steer quick attach, that's gonna be a bucket. On your bucket, there's a couple different styles you can get. You can get them like this one here where it does not have a bolt-on cutting edge. What a bolt-on edge is, it's gonna be a protective edge that bolts onto the bucket itself. Basically protects it if you're doing any kind of back grading or back filling with it. It's gonna grind down that couple hundred dollar piece of uh, metal before you grind down your potentially thousand dollar bucket. Keeping it up at the loader frame, we will talk about the first piece that is a terminology specific to Kubota. That's gonna be the swift tack loader design. So if you see any tractors, generally it's gonna be on the smaller tractors, say your BX, B01, LX tractors. These will have the option to have the swift tack loader. What that is, is when you disconnect your loader frame from the tractor, instead of individually pulling off the hydraulic hoses, it's just gonna be one lever here pull that up and then they'll all come up in one shot. We're gonna move back to the backhoe now. There is a little bit of terminology back here as well. The first piece being these arms right here. They're called your stabilizer arms. So when you operate your backhoe, you will drop these down to, to the ground, pick up your back tires, and then that'll make the tractor a lot more stable when you're digging, say off to the side or really far out. The next piece of terminology will be this right here. It is gonna be called a thumb. There's two different kinds of thumbs you can get from Kubota. They're gonna be mechanical style thumb, like this one you see here. So there's gonna be a couple pin options you can do and you can just open and close that thumb depending on what you're picking up and what you're moving. The other option will be a hydraulic thumb. So we don't see hydraulic thumbs until you move into the construct the construction TLB lineup, say your B26, L47, M62 again, or if you get a BH92 Baco on your L60 tractors, MX tractors, or even an L4701 tractor, that's where you'll start seeing a hydraulic cylinder here, and there'll be a foot pedal where you can open and close that thumb, much like a mini excavator. We're gonna go over the different types of PTO on a tractor. This might even deserve its own video. A lot of people they, they ask is what does a PTO stand for? And that's a power takeoff. Essentially what that is, is off of your transmission, you're gonna have a bunch of different shafts that take the power from the engine and convert it to implements, say snow blowers, mower decks, rotary cutters, rear implements such as tillers and power rakes and all that kind of stuff. They will be PTO powered, but there's a different 
There's different kinds of PTO uh, systems that you will see. The most common one that you're gonna see is an independent style PTO. So what that means is that your PTO is independent of the transmission of the tractor. We see this a lot in hydrostatic tractors where you can move forward and reverse using your pedal and then the PTO engagement switch will be controlled on the left-hand side of the tractor by a yellow lever. You just engage your PTO and then you can move forward and reverse and go from high, medium, low while your tractor is, is moving. So it's completely independent of the transmission and the tractor. The next type of PTO we will talk about will be a live PTO. We're gonna see this on our L2501 hydrostatic version where you're gonna have a clutch on the left-hand side of the tractor. And what you're gonna do is if you press that in, it will disengage your PTO, but you also need it to engage your PTO. So when you press that clutch pedal in, there's gonna be a mechanical switch you can use to engage that PTO. And when you release that clutch, your PTO will spin up at the rear of the tractor. On tractors much like this one, the B2401, where you actually still have to shift gears, you can have a live clutch system that's also a two-stage clutch. So the clutch is gonna have two different settings to it. If you push it in halfway, that's gonna disengage your PTO and do the PTO controls much like the L2501. And when you fully push in that clutch pedal, that's what you're gonna be able to use to shift gears. So when you go from gears one through three, depending on how many are on the tractor. And then this B2401, this is what they call a full manual clutch system. So your clutch or your PTO and your engine transmission are in one. So when you press that clutch, you're gonna be able to shift gears, but it's also gonna disengage your PTO at the back. So if you're using this to blow snow and you need to shift gears, when you do press in that clutch pedal, you will stop your snowblower, you will stop your rotary cutter as well. Another key thing to remember about PTOs is that they're not just at the rear of the tractor. A lot of PTOs, many of them, many tractors, they do have PTOs at the rear, but some of them like this one here and some smaller tractors like compact, subcompact tractors, they will have PTOs in the middle of the tractor. Mid PTOs are very handy because it allows you to run front attachments, say front snow blowers, mid mount mowers. You can even run sweepers out the front of the tractor as well. On the back of this tractor, I decided to pick a big one because it's a little bit easier to see than looking on a BX. But if you guys are looking at a BX tractor, even compact, subcompact tractors, it's gonna be all the same principles that apply to this bigger M6 right here. You're gonna see up here, you will have your top link assembly on the three point hitch. This is gonna connect to the top of the implement and kind of hold it in place. It doesn't have any lifting ability or hydraulic cylinders here that will lift for it. It basically just holds the angle properly and if you're doing any kind of grading or blade work and you want a different angle, you can extend and retract that top link as well. Right here, you will see your lift arms. So this is what's actually gonna lift up your three point hitch implement. They are connected to the lift arm cylinders back there. Attached to your lift arms, you will see your stabilizer arms. That's off to the side. Sometimes they're turnbuckle screw styles or on fancier ones like this, it will be a pin system where you can open and close the uh, width of your three point hitch to match it up to the implement you're actually using. Over here as well, you will be able to level out your uh, link arms or your lift arms, sorry. So if you need to grade on an angle or change the angle, if it's an offset implement, you can do that using that arm right there. And then in the middle here, you will see a drawbar. So a lot of tractors, they do come with a drawbar. The advantage of that is some bigger ag Im implements, they do require a drawbar system where you put a pin through that. And instead of towing it with a three point hitch, you will tow it with a drawbar. Or you can actually put a trailer hitch ball in there and tow your trailers around your property. Back here, you will see that PTO shaft coming right out of the back of the tractor. So on a tractor, there's different hydraulic ports you can add to your tractor. The first one being a set of rear remotes. One set of rear remotes is two valves right here that come off of the back of the tractor. These remotes are used to power implements on the back. Say you have a snowblower and you need to rotate the chute and deflect the chute. This is what that would power. Some implements like cedars, they have an open and close function on the door. So you can hydraulically power them using these remotes. On some tractors, they are an add-on like this LX2610. You will have to add them as an option. But then other tractors in Canada, like the L6060 with the cab, they do come standard from Kubota's factory.
The next hydraulics that can be added to your tractor is a third function kit. A third function kit is basically a set of rear remotes that come off of the front of the tractor. The main implement that it will power will be a grapple. So these two kind of go hand in hand. If you ever want to get a grapple, I would recommend getting a third function kit right from the time of purchase because it is a bit of a pain to bring your tractor back to the dealership down the road and install it after the fact. Another implement that can be powered off of the front is a trip blade. So if you wanted to put a snow blade on your quick attach system from Kubota, you can get one that hydraulically angles using that third function kit. The last piece of terminology we're gonna talk about is the K-Connect system. You're gonna see this a lot, people talking about their four point manual K-Connect system. Basically all that is is gonna be this black uh, piece of metal here. What this does is it actually hooks onto the front of your tractor, say this one's actually for an LX2610. It's gonna hook onto the front of the tractor and what it's gonna allow you to do is hook up K-Connect implements K-Connect Im implements range all the way from blades to sweepers and even this snowblower right here. You can hook onto the front of the tractor and hydraulically control it. The nice thing about this K-Connect system is that you don't need any tools. Anything that's gold on it is just a pin you pop out and then that slides onto your tractor. I just want to thank you guys for watching and if there's any terminology that you guys know that I maybe missed in this video, please leave it down below in the comments. And as, and as always, if you need help with parts, sales, or service, give us a call at 613-225-0555. Thank you.